Hey guys, so we're gonna make what you can see right now, I guess. And yeah, it's quite fun to make. We're using a rigid body and uh, some dynamic paint. So let's remove this main cube here and add a plane. I will also put my screencast keys on here. And let's um, scale this plane a little bit up. So scale times, let's do times four. Scale times four. And we also need a sphere, so mesh, sphere, UV sphere is good. And we're going to move that along the x-axis up here. And this one we rotate 30 to 20 degrees around the y-axis. Something like this is okay. And what will happen is, let's move this to the right spot. This will become a rigid body and it will fall down on this um, collision for right now, okay? So I'm gonna scale this a little bit down and move it above here. Give this smooth shading. And I'm gonna move it a little bit more down, okay? So let's look what this does. I'm gonna give this a, I'm gonna make this a rigid body. So rigid body, and I'm gonna make this also a rigid body, but this is gonna be a Passive rigid body, okay? So if we play it now, our active will just roll around the passive. We want this to be a little bit more bouncy, because if you saw in the preview that I showed you, that it bounced a little bit up. I really thought that it had like uh, something special, so let's select this uh, bottom plane, and we're gonna go to surface response, and I put the bounciness, let's put it a bit up, let's do 0.5 for right now and let's look what it does, okay? So you just uh, go all the way in the beginning of the animation and you play this. But you can see that the bounciness doesn't work uh, as well as I want to at least. So I'm gonna put the bounciness all the way up and let's look what that does. Still doesn't do a lot. So it could be that the bounciness of this rigid body also needs to be put up a little bit. So let's put that at 0.5. And that already does the work, okay? So uh, let's go a little bit higher, 0.7. Awesome. So now the bounciness of this is one, and this is 0.7. It could be totally different though, guys. Um, on your, like, it also depends on the scale, whatever you have, on the mass that you give your rigid body. Uh, so just play around a little bit with that. It could be different for anyone. But I think it's time to also make this plane dent in. And we are not actually going to do it with this particular plane. We're going to duplicate this plane and move a little bit around the z-axis. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to delete the rigid body constraints out of uh, the top plane. And we can also give it another name just so we know which, which one is different. And this is going to be our displacement snow. So let's give this our dynamic paint, and it's gonna be a canvas. So in this canvas, you have uh, multiple settings and options, but we're gonna put the format is at a vertex, that's okay. The surface type should be a displacement though. Our ball needs to be also a dynamic paint, but instead of a canvas, it should be a brush. So it brushes this uh, so-called paint. Right now, you probably don't see anything happening if you play it, and that is because this particular plane works with the format vertex, which is okay, but we do not have enough vertices, right? So I'm just gonna subdivide this, and you can do it like uh, however many times you want, but keep in mind that the more vertices you place here, the longer it will take to calculate it. And I actually forgot to add brush here, so you have to add the brush, of course. Let's play it again, and now you can see that it works great. Very, very cool. So we have two bounces here, which is okay. And what else I want to do is I really want this animation to start here. So I'm uh, go to frame one and I click on E location. And then when it goes down here, I also want this ball to grow, right? I want it to take snow and grow and grow and grow. So around the frame that we fall, here, uh, around frame 40, we're gonna do E and then scaling. And then um, let's play this all the way again. 
falls and it rolls around here it stops so around frame frame 90 it stops so here we're gonna scale it up e scaling so our animation st stops around frame 100 so we can do this at end 100 and we want to bake the dynamic paint so the displacement that we see as you go to the cache in your plane you can see that we can't really bake anything Cache is disabled until the file is saved. So we need to save this file. So uh, save it. Okay, so now after we saved it, we can bake this. And one more important thing is if you select it, you have your end frame also here. So we know that our animation kind of stops at 100, but you also should put this end frame to 100. Otherwise, it's gonna bake all the way to 250. There's no need for that. And now you can actually just uh, start baking. Very, very handy. And here you can see our bake. There is one thing though, is that our rigid body is not baked with this, okay? So as you can see, the rigid body is gone now. So we need to also bake this rigid body. And it's actually here, object, rigid body, and bake to keyframes. So now Blender is calculating the physics into keyframes. So they are both baked right now. Very cool. And it's time for our materials, I guess. So let's expand this a little bit and get a shade editor in here. This material is not uh, from myself. I actually found it on a Facebook group and I just saved the picture. So I don't really remember who made it. Um, if you know who made it or if you are the one who made it, please tell me so I can put your name up here. Um, I really liked it, it was very cool. And I thought this would be cool to make with it. So let's go into a material. We're gonna go here and call this uh, snow. And let's change these values so they fit our needs. Um, subsurface will be going up, so maybe 0.5. Specular goes all the way up. Roughness at 0.8. First of all, our lighting isn't really the way we want it. So I'm gonna delete this here, this lamp, and I'm gonna put a sunlight. And the sunlight just reacts uh, like a real sun, which is cool. I'm gonna put my animation a bit further so let's put this to the timeline a bit towards here put the sunlight a bit here very cool and i'm also going to go into cycles and that's because um one thing of our material just does not work in eevee and i'll explain which one is later but you can also see that the material just looks way better already just when we jump into cycles so I want, I first want to add some displacement, okay? So let's get a texture coordinate in here and a mapping node. Generated goes into the vector. And we're gonna use a, a noise texture. Vector goes into the vector. And now um, we're gonna put this, we're gonna place this into a vector displacement. So this node does not work in um, Eevee. That's why we go to cycles. This displacement goes into the displacement of the material output and you can see a lot of displacement happening here. Very, very cool. So I'm gonna look from here and I'll put the scale a bit up to six and detail can also go up around five, makes it look way more realistic. And this scale goes down so it's less deep, right? This, this is just the deep, kind of the deepness of this uh, displacement. Very, very cool. So I also want a little bit of the reflective dots on here. Um, I think it's better to just show you instead of trying to explain. So I'm gonna add another noise texture here. This noise texture is gonna be a very high, so 500. Uh, detail will be at zero. And we're gonna add a brightness and contrast node. Two of them, so we're gonna duplicate this one. And they go after each other. So the fact of the noise texture goes into the color, okay? Not the color, because we want a black and white value instead of a color value. And a lot of people might forget, but the noise texture is actually a colored uh, value. So that's why the fact and the fact is black and white. Um, brightness and the contrast goes into the color and this end brightness and contrast goes into our clear code. 
And you can already see some stuff happening here, which is very cool. And we can change this to whatever our need, uh, needs are. I have this at uh, minus two and the contrast at eight. Brightness is at zero and the contrast is at 10. So here we can see them again. Uh, I think if I zoom in, it's a little bit better for you guys to see. These little dots there are, there is nice reflective dots. I'll put this clear cause roughness a bit up, so 0.25. So if you want them bigger, you just put the scale down, let's say. See? But um, around 500 looks very, very nice for this uh, particular case. And we want the same material, of course, in our plane here. So I'm just gonna grab the snow material and click on this too. And we're gonna change this name to snow floor or whatever you want to, because this displacement is just way too much for the floor, right? It just looks, yeah, looks fake. So I'm gonna put the skill down to two. This already looks way, way better. And you can always change this uh, skill also, maybe a little bit lower. Um, we, we do want some differences in them, but not too much. Our sun actually looks good, uh, but I do want to add some extra lighting to the scene. And we're gonna use a world texture in here. So let's go into a shader editor and go to world. And we need to add an environment texture, an environment texture and open and open the snowy park. So you can get it down in the description below. Uh, this is way too bright for me though. I'm gonna put this at 0.2 or 0.3, something like that. And we can always play a little bit around with the sun, right? So you use nodes and you can put this uh, maybe a bit up or not, whatever you feel like. So uh, 0.1.5, something like that. So if you look here, we have a nice scene. We might put our camera a little bit different, but that's all up to you. And um, yeah, if you want to render it, just click on F12. And the last thing that you can see here is that we are showing our bottom plane, which we do not want. So if you select this bottom plane, go here into the visibility and put show renders off, show in render off. And now it will not show up in your render and everything will work the way you want it. So I hope you guys learned a lot from this and yeah, good luck. So see you guys in the next one.